Hello, everybody, and welcome back from Magic 2014. We're here for another game with Last Grey Wolf and Alpaca Patrol. How's it going, bros? Hello. Uh, good. I'm part of the bro army today. Oh, that's fantastic. No. I've been waiting for you to finally join that. I know. I'm. I'm in. I'm. I'm. I'm a member. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go kill non bros. Is that what you do when you're in the bro army? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's what I would do. Fight all the infidels. Yeah. Attack <laughs> Murder all the infidels, all the non bros. No, yeah. no shots fired or anything, obviously. But uh, uh, okay, yep. All right. So sure. It, <laughs> it, I shouldn't even be surprised anymore. Like really. eight lands or no lands. No, uh, it's just it's just you know I random two decks in this game. Is, oh, is it masks here? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, no. I just, I just, th those are just the two decks that I random when I play Magic. <laughs> those yeah. are just the two. I don't know. Okay. They, they could, they must have patched the game because they saw our series and they were like, I was actually seeing. Did you guys see that uh, Ed McMillan designed a Magic card that's actually going to be in the new set? Oh, nice. That's Weird. cool. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Rob, um, me too. Aha! Masks of Demir party. High five. Masks of Demir, Demir party. Dim Dimitri Demir. Is it? Are you? Supposed you said to me too. You said you were. You also designed a magic card. That would have been pretty sweet. Yeah, that would have been really sweet. Yeah, it's just a, uh, just a blank color. Is all it is. Uh, this is about as far as my artistic integrity goes. <laughs> all right, I'm doing this uh, as like, in good good faith that you also won't make me discard cards, Austin, because you have masks <laughs> of Demir. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like, as I was thinking, I was like, I could make Austin uh, discard a card, but he probably is just gonna play a card next time that makes me discard a card. So really, it's like a knife fight because nobody wins really in a knife fight. Nobody wins. In a Every, knife everybody fight. just gets the cut. Knife wins. Yeah, the knife wins. That's true. But so I'm, I'm the one without the knife, so that's why I get cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. We just kind of threw our knives up into the air and they just landed nearby. <laughs> so it's, it's like whenever I see that happen in like in those videos of. Um, of like in uh, in some countries where they they have a great victory and they shoot their AK-47s into the air, it's like that's a really bad idea. Those are bullets and they are Very gonna cool. come back down. They don't they, they don't like stick. They don't go into yeah. space. That's a really bad idea, especially when it's like hundreds of people firing literally hundreds of rounds. I've I've seen them unplug their clip and plug a new one in and fire that clip out. So like that is a really bad idea. I don't know, man. It was in some movie actually that I saw, and I think this dude was getting a like driven in a taxi, and one of the bullets just like killed the driver of the taxi. Oh Jesus, that's horrifying. Or yeah. It was, like in the, I don't remember what. It was somebody in the car died because of one of those bullets just randomly killed him, and nobody knew, and he's just dead. And that was the end of that. Well, that's that sounds terrible. I don't remember like what movie it was. Enough. I think it was one of those times I was just flipping through channels on TV and it was just on and I didn't know ever what the title was and never bothered to look and I never finished watching it either, so... Yeah. yeah. Movies passing in the night. Yeah, Movies I get passing you. passing in the night. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh... Yeah, it's just, it just seems like a really... It seems like really, really short-sighted. Like, immediately short-sighted. Like, like so short-sighted that it's... You are only thinking about the very moment that you are firing your gun. And really, not even that far. Like, it seems... Yeah, why don't you just, like, shoot it into the ground? Yeah! Well, paper. no, that's a really bad they idea. ricochet, though. Yeah, you'd ricochet yeah. bullets all over the place. Let's shoot it into the sand. There you go. That's fine. Well, they still ricochet if you shot it into the sand. I don't know yeah. why I put weird emphasis on the into ricochet. But... <laughs> well, they still ricochet! Yeah, no, they, they would. They, the bullets still ricochet. I mean, unless you shoot it into, like, a really big... Like, if you, it depends on where you shoot it into the sand. Like, if it's a big mound of sand and you shoot it right into the center of the mound, then, you know, it probably won't. It's like the, I guess, like, sandbags, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Let's just not shoot bullets in celebration, unless it's, like, in games or something. Yeah, that's a good idea, in general. Those bullets never come back down. I wonder where they go. Celebrations involving bullets. It's just a bad idea. I like to think that all the bullets that are shot into the air in video games keep traveling to this magical land where all the bullets come together and form like a giant metal planet. Become friends. Oh, wow. That sounds awesome. Yeah, that actually yeah. does sound pretty sweet. Are, do you think the majority of bullets in video games at this point are actually modeled bullets, or do you think they're still just like a hit scan? Like Most of them checks? are, are hit scan, actually. Like a lot, a, lot of, a lot of games just still run like hit scan stuff. Right. Like, I think Call I of Duty Max is Payne all... I was really proud of that. Like, they actually they modeled the actual bullets. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you know what's actually kind of amazing? You know you know what game actually uses real projectiles for their bullets and just other projectiles? Don't say Counter-Strike. No, no. Uh, uh, the um, the uh, Total War games. That's surprising. I know, <laughs> like, right? Four, that seems right? like... <laughs> yeah. No, but it, like, it, it really... It seems like you guys probably could totally get away with not having real projectiles and it would probably make your game run a lot better for most... Where do they get all the damn processing power? Those games are crazy already. I, I know. I, it's amazing. Like, I don't know. They've been doing it since, like, I think, um, I think since Medieval 2 Total War, they've been running uh, projectiles. It, it might it might have been Empire that they started doing it, but, yeah. It's 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 insane. It's crazy that they actually do that, and it's, use, it's they, they actually have real projectiles, so. Pretty craziness. Hmm. Well, if yeah. they're medieval, though, they're not probably shooting bullets. What are they shooting? Blunderbusses? Arrows. <laughs> oh, Arrows? And, and, yeah, and some of the things had uh, had bullets, some of the players, or uh, right. units, so. Yeah. I was just thinking what it would be like to put a Max Payne mod into something like that with a squinched up face and, like, freeze time and then just dodge <laughs> all the arrows. That'd be pretty cool. Why could he do that again? Was it because he was on drugs or something? That's probably uh, drugs. I think it, well, I think in Max Payne 3, they tried to, they tried to, he was like, drunk explain in that one. it, yeah, they tried to explain it with lore, but in, like, Max Payne 1 and 2, it was just, like, yeah, this is just a cool game. It's just, where just it shoots, a game convention. Yeah, yeah it's just cool. It. Like, it's just cool that we can do this, so we're doing it. Suck it, basically. Right. I can respect that. Suck That's it. cool. So I'm, yeah. like, hitting on my lap, and he is just fighting the shit out of me right now. I don't really know why. That's sad. Yeah, no, it's Watch awesome. Needles. He's gonna get your leg. Actually, to that point though, like games that that like try way too hard to explain all of the game mechanics in uh in the lore, just you know sometimes they just go too far. I think a good example is like the Assassin's Creed series. It's like okay, yeah. I get it. You want to make it totally real and stuff, but I don't care. Like <laughs> I don't. I don't care. Like he can see through walls and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's it. I, you don't need to explain it. I don't need to know why you can see. That's fine. That's cool. I, I I can live with that. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of annoying when they try to make that bullshit explanation. Like, oh, it's the telepathy of the, the neutrons inside of the atoms. They shine red. Yeah. When you look at them specifically. Right. Yeah, okay. it's it's weird. Well, I don't know. Like I would say that you yeah, I probably agree with you because if you're going to go that far and you want to make everything real, then make it just real across the board because you can't still have this argument and have the dudes from Assassin's Creed be jumping off the tops of buildings into haystacks. Just going to say that. Like that It doesn't fucking make sense. Yeah, that's exactly. Not even, like, that's... You can explain. Like you can't explain that. that that's just straight up like not I, I know that is. that's exactly like that that's the, the it's like half assed because that that's like also whenever people uh argue for how encumbrance in video games is fun or like it's a fine mechanic like like in Skyrim or something where like people are like yeah no it's fine that you can't uh you know you get you, can't, you get over encumbered and stuff and it's like no that's so fucking dumb because you can't even say that it's because of realism because no realistic person would be carrying a hundred fucking swords anyway no matter what your weight limit is you know it's either you go all the way where I can carry one sword and one thing right. or you just just let me carry as much as I want. Like that's that, like why 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 does it matter? Why does it matter that I have to spend a bunch of time doing inventory management? Inventory management is like the least fun thing in video games, I think personally. And it's still I in the game. I kind of like it sometimes. If it's, it's done right. If it's done well, then it can be. But like usually, it's not. Yeah, it's rarely done well. Most of the time, it's just obnoxious. Like, yeah, it's just a waste of time. I, ha I don't think I've actually ever really even seen an inventory system that works properly. I think Dark Souls did it pretty well. Um, yeah, I, I don't like Dark Souls because I honestly get annoyed scrolling through it. And yeah, it's scrolling just... through it is really annoying, and there's no way to sort, which is kind of whack. But, but beyond that, though, like it's it, like it's nice because I don't really have to worry about having too many things, and I can just get whatever I want whenever I want which is kind of nice, but yeah, I don't know. If you want to sort it, that's what the item box was for. You're supposed to empty out your inventory to an item box so it's at least not with you all the time. Yeah, I know. But again, that's like, that's just really boring to me. Really? Yeah. No. Yes. You've revealed his whole hand. Oh, no. You know what that means. So you're no. going to beat me up with your fucking flyer, and I don't have anything in my hand to even try and make a plan toward it. No. 
<laughs> no. Man, magic's really unfair sometimes. You just don't get shit. <laughs> it is, yeah. Sometimes that happens. This is why if we had a fourth player, you guys would have been worried about that person potentially, and maybe wouldn't be attacking me every turn. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not attacking you, so, you know. Taste the salt. You have that, you have, you have that going for you. Yeah. So you guys been watching SGDQ lately? Yup. I haven't actually. Um, I've been I've been quite busy. That's surprising that you haven't. Yeah, I mean, I, it's just I, I watch so much of AGDQ. I kind of got my fill, and SGDQ is kind of like the AGDQ light. Right. And there's a lot. The games are a lot less high profile, and it, are it's, they? I didn't really look at the whole schedule. Yeah, but... yeah. They, okay. they there's a lot less of the higher games. Because it, the thing that they, they, they what they do is that they have such a limited you know time for all these games that if the game was at AGDQ it's probably not going to be at SGDQ unless it's like a short popular game like Meat Boy or something like that. Um, <laughs> and so That's funny that you around. mentioned Meat Boy. <laughs> I, I saw the Twitter thing hat was was there shenanigans with that? Oh There's yeah. There's a little shenaniganry, yeah. Uh, so the guy uh, Matty Ice that was doing the 106 percent, yeah, that's his name. 106% run was having a lot of problems because of uh, issues that I thought were because of frame rate inconsistency because they actually seem like the same issues that I'd run into in my exploits trying to stream it. Jesus Christ, are you really killing that now? He's no, sending anyway, it back to your hand. Back on your, on your... Oh my god. <laughs> this is so frustrating. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, he just kept, uh, kept screwing up in like a lot of ways that chat would have had him basically crucified for yeah uh, because everyone who's ever watched anyone play anything on twitch is apparently better than that person yes. and can judge yeah. them immediately always it was descending into a spiral of goddamn chaos and insanity and i really wanted to slap a lot of them because it was getting really stupid mm. uh, and then like halfway through his run he encountered a level where there was an upward conveyor belt and he was trying to e eject himself from that conveyor belt and it simply wouldn't let him and chat was convinced that he was just so incompetent that even having beaten this game hundreds of times potentially he still couldn't beat this one level ever again apparently yeah. so uh yeah they went and found out that it was actually a driver issue and then they went and fixed the driver issue and then he could beat it yep and then chad got to eat humble pie because they can shut the fuck up at that point yeah no, it, chad never eats the humble pie though. they really don't they, they were still flaming they're like little afterwards. children you can hold the humble pie in front of their face and they'll be like no and you turn their head like no i'm not right, right, right. yeah that's that's twitch chat yeah yeah well so that card just... rob i don't like it yeah no it's it's pretty shitty yeah like, i really really don't like it yeah yeah, that's uh, that's a fair hey, thing hey, to not Nick, like. Nick, you wanna you wanna not like Rob's card with me for a turn? I don't <laughs> care, man. You're gonna kill me in like two turns anyway. No, no, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let's 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 do a little. You uh, really you really wanna exiled my one card that I had a chance to get better with. Let's let's do some some Rob hunting if you know what I mean. Yeah, you're, you're no, gonna listen to the guy. Yeah, exactly. Nick's you've been, just been fucking nailing on him for a while. I don't think he's gonna be down for that. No, I mean you can just attack him and then I'll attack you. Want to do? Oh, what you lagged there? Oh, I said you can just attack Rob if you want to like use all your creatures and tap them, and then you'll be open and I'll attack you if that's what you want. Yeah, that. that's good. I well, can, uh, can but that. <laughs> all right, Austin, you really want to start this game? The Nick's almost dead, and you're gonna do the, the dirty work. I don't look, man. Look, man. Apparently, you're gonna do some dirty work. I can't even really attack you with that much now, because Nick does like Mike Rowe now. <laughs> Giving you a chance, Nick. Even if I die, Rob's going to get you. He's going to get right. you. we got to not hold grudges in this game. Yeah, do what you got to do to win, man. And that the the move there is to attack Rob. That's that's the way to win. Mm, I don't know if that's actually true. That's the way to not lose. Well, you have two 4-4 four, four flyers out now. Yeah, they're eating away at my health, though. I'm, I'm in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I can see that. I'm in a lot of trouble because... Yeah. I couldn't kill you fast enough before Rob got his 6-6 six, six out, so now I have to worry about both of you because Rob wants to win, and you want huh. dead. So you could have made a few less enemies, and then maybe this wouldn't have been I such a conundrum. I just tried to win, man. That's all. I know. That's all. You had the, all the... You know, politics are like 69% of the battle. It's yeah, true. Yeah. And the other Super Bowl forty eight percent is just, you know, strong play. Pretty sure that doesn't add up properly, but I'll Oh no, it does. Right. it does. It does. It does. 
It, it MS DOS. It MS DOS. It MS <laughs> the joke I've DOS. Ever made. It's box. actually pretty good. I kind of like that. <laughs> But yeah, uh, what, what were we just saying? We were just talking about something before Austin tried to. SGDQ. And oh then, yeah. right, yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. I so felt bad. It, he, it, he was, he was, he, oh. he was also being a little bit angry, and it was, it was kind of like, ooh, ooh. This he is, wasn't helping his cause. Any, he was, yeah. yeah. It was, it was not looking. It, it was, it was, it got real awkward real quick. I guess the, you gotta say though, he's in front of thousands of people and everything is going yes. horrible. Oh so. yeah, I mean like I, oh, I, I agree. I would not want to. Uh, I would not want to deal with that at all. Like I was in no way envious of that man's position. I mean, choking in front of like e even if it's not his fault, but like still, he's still choking in front of like seventy-five thousand people. Ugh, I I can't even. I yeah. can't even imagine. I remember when I was doing uh, a race, the Twilight Princess race, and uh, it was a big showcase race, and I had more viewers than I'd had before, mm -hmm. and you know, it was uh, money on, like, it was, like, I think $100 if you won. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, and I started doing really poorly, and uh, it got it got to me, man. It was, it was, uh, it was stressful. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually ended up about halfway through, I just turned my mic off because I realized I was being too salty. Yeah. Yeah, there's that'll... just people in the chat that were like, "Hey, I can play this level, or I can play the game better than this guy can." I'm like, "Okay, you can play this level better than he can, but he's doing like 300 levels in sequence, all with advanced strats, trying to do as well as he can with the pressure of 75,000 people making fun of him right now." So suck a dick, and if you're that freaking good, go make a YouTube video, and I'll go vote it up then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Twitch chat has gotten so like like it, it's weird because like if you would have asked me like two or three months ago how if Twitch chat could have gotten worse, I would have been no. Like Twitch chat is as worse as it'll ever be now. And two and three months later, it, it's gotten worse. Like I don't even know how, but it uh, has. Yeah. Once it gets a bigger audience, it's gonna get worse and worse. Like that's just how it's gonna, just how it's gonna be. There's basically. like ten solid minutes where all there was was just kappas. Yeah. Like, yeah. with no context. No one was doing it for any reason, just other than, let's just make the chat unusable for anything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. even understand why it wasn't in slow mode with 75,000 people. That's kind of mm -hmm. weird. Yeah. You did a lot of it's things to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to do some damage before I get kerplunked. Mm-hmm. I kind of dug my own grave here, so... Just trying to, yes. to. Sorry if I come off too salty. I'm just like kind no, of. No, no, that would make me salty too. Being assholes yeah. to somebody that's like trying to do their best under really awful circumstances, and then like they revealed that he was actually hamstrung by a thing that had no nothing to do with his actual fault, and then people still were talking shit about him. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty sad. That was yeah, a sad was day. Cool. Yeah. And who's who's gonna really be the one at the end of the day that has to, you know, bear that burden? It's gonna be him that's gonna be pissed at himself for not doing well. Yeah. So like, just cut him off. You're gonna be really plate. disappointed, Rob. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, no. well. It's too bad I can't exile all of your lands. Yeah, that would that would suck. <laughs> I'd be really broken if I could do that. But, uh, but yeah, SGDQ overall is still, still really cool, doing stuff for charity. They, they, I don't think people give enough credit to them. AGDQ raised $1 million last year. Oh, I know. Yeah, like, it's that, pretty crazy. That is unbelievable. This, this is partially why I'm so frustrated, because in theory, the community should be fucking fabulous. The speedrunning community is great, and it's raising charity, and we're all gathered together watching a bunch of games we love. So why do we have to be dicks to each other? Yeah. Nothing about that equation says, let's be dicks. Like, all of those things say, let's just be friends. Let's have a good time. Why can't we be friends? Right? Why can't we why can't, be friends? Why can't we be... Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah? Why? Oh, no, that's that. Oh, why? I'm going to kill it. Um, yeah, I know. Why Why can't we be friends? Like, in like, a, in like an overarching sense, why is everyone going to be such an asshole? It's just a contest to see who's got the wittiest response to everything possible, and the only thing that the internet values is cynicism and negativity. So they all just slap each other on the back for figuring out how to write Kappa 5,000 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's basically just a big negative circle jerk in there. I don't even like to say that very often, but in that case, I think it it's totally true. is. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> totally is. I am boned. Yeah, you're not in a good place. Funny no. how things go, huh? <laughs> hey, man. If you would have helped me kill Rob, you, we would have been in a better spot right now. Because once I, I go, so. actually, you're in a pretty good spot. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't think, I don't think Nick's in a very dangerous position. So why were you attacking me there, Rob? Because you started destroying me and I couldn't do it. You've been, you've been, you literally could have, you, you literally could have killed Nick, but instead you decided to stop your onslaught and discard half my hand and attack me three turns in a row. So like, it's like, I, I, yeah, I'm going to defend myself if you're going to keep doing that. Well, he probably felt bad that he was attacking me so many times. I guess, yeah. I, I feel bad for you, Nick, so I'm just going to do this. Wow, you're gonna make me discard. All right, discard well, your last card. This is pretty funny, actually. Now I could actually have gotten rid of some cards, and I wouldn't have minded as much. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a card, and then I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been great last turn game. There could still be something in your deck, right? You have 11 health. You're not dead yet. That's true. Yeah, that's. True. I mean, maybe there's a shot. There's a shot in the dark. I mean, if I went all in on you, I think I'd probably kill you in one oh, shot. Oh, but... for sure. Uh, like, that would leave me open to being instant killed by Rob. Oh, that's obviously. true. So, so I guess I do a have a little idea. bit of. I have a bit of a buffer. That's right. But, uh, Unlike but, last game, where like that didn't matter and people just chose to die for no reason because they didn't see the strategy two turns ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh no, my land. <laughs> my land. Uh... My land. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, I thought that as well. <laughs> We're all of like minds, friends. Oh great, yeah. You can't think, oh my le, and then not finish with Anta. It's just really difficult to. Yeah. Good old Anta. Good old Anta. Good old Lanta. Related to Santa. Anta. Lanta. Ant Lanta, the relative of Santa. Bubbly, bubbly, bubba, bubbly, bubbly, bubba, bubba, bubbly, bubbly. <laughs> I, I went back and watched that video like four times. It's really funny. And every time you said who's master, who's master? Who's, who's master? master? I am the who's master. And I shall strike you down. Who's monster? Monster. Uh, <laughs> I, I laughed. I yeah. couldn't handle it. This is real good. It's yeah. weird because I knew it was coming every time I clicked the play button and it still got me. Yeah. Listening back to it, I actually didn't really understand why it was as funny at the time as it actually was. Mm. It was just one of those things like we were all in a weird, goofy mood, well, I guess. It, well, the thing is that it was like this building. Like, it was like, ooh, this monster. Ooh, this monster. Ooh, it was like <laughs> unexpected because it was so right. emphasized. Yeah. It sounded yeah. like you were actually laughing, too. Like, I was serious. Oh, I was. You, you were you were laughing. And it was a coincidence that I, I laughed as hard as I did at the moment I chose to say Ooze Monster. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it just worked out really well. Was... By the way, the, if you don't know what the hell we're talking about, because you probably don't, uh, since you may not have seen the video, uh, we actually recorded a an episode of The Yog on Rob's channel with Malls and, and us three. So you should go watch that, and I'll try and remember it's, to put the link in the description for you. You know, you can kill Austin right now, by the way, Nick. No, you can't because you're out of time. Yeah. No, I didn't really want to. Yeah. Um. Anyway, but yeah, 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 no, you, you could uh, go see it. It was really fun. It was very enjoyable. It was, that was the, one of my favorite Yogg recordings. The Yogg is, is a good game. It's a, it's a fun time. Yeah. I had to make my own entertainment because I've seen all the permutations in that game at this point. So it's like, I just got to be stupid about it. And it's just way more fun that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's reasonable. And I still won the game even having gone to the tavern every single time. For the even having game. gone home. Yeah. You actually $3. were like the strongest character and you had I know. gone to the... I made no decisions. I just went to the tavern and drank every <laughs> that, single that, time. Yeah. That, that was pretty fun. A few times. Yep. Was, Drinking was... OP. Please nerf. Yeah, really. Oh, really? <laughs> just this is funny to me. You That's the only reason. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the only reason. <laughs> you are a butthole. <laughs> you are the hole of a butt. The oh. entire thing. All of it. Yep. Every the whole every piece. Thing. Every single every little thing that she does is magic. It's true. It's a brown eyed girl. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Everything he does is a brown-eyed girl. Sha -la 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 -la. 
And that's all we're allowed to say. Austin yep, told me not to ruin that song for him one time, so now I'm going to just do my best to make sure he associates I, I, that with assholes. I enjoy that song a lot. It's a good song. It's a song about a butthole. It's about a girl he loved in the past. It's and a he cast the man in the back, my lord. <laughs> it's basically a butthole song. Yeah, it's pretty much a butthole song is what it is. I was all making love in the green grass behind the stadium with you, my brown-eyed girl. Mm -hmm. That puts a whole new spin on that. <laughs> yeah. Puts a whole new. There's, they also they're they're slipping and sliding at at the waterfall all along the waterfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why are they hanging like, out oh. near a waterfall? And they're also using a CB radio at one point, aren't they? A yeah, no, they're gunning down the old man with a transistor radio. What? Yeah, yeah, they're gunning down an old man. Gunning down the old man with the transistor. They probably That's put awful. they put some like like gunpowder in it and then just lit it. <laughs> gunned him down with all the shrapnel. Killed and then they sing man. about it. <laughs> yeah. La, la, la. <laughs> yeah, it's horrifying. It's really a terrifying song, honestly, when you think about it. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna die to my own creature. It really, really is an asshole song. It's like the asshole's anthem. It's like the, the anthem. Ant it's like the antlers for assholes. The movie. The, mo the movie. The man movie. The man movie. I get another land, please. Oh, that, that, that's not land. Like, what you're talking about? <laughs> I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I don't even know oh, what I'm I, talking about. I can do a thing. I only really want to. <laughs> you know what I will do, though? I will... T oh, but... Actually, this is... No, this is hilarious. I am going to do this. Are you going to do something to me? How many more days of the Steam Sailor left? Is it almost over yet? You know, Austin... <laughs> You 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 literally had a chance to win the game, and then you decided instead to shoot yourself and me in the foot. Those are your choices, and you wonder why I hold grudges against you. I made a couple of mistakes. Oh no! Which card should I discard? Why oh, the land. I ask? You should discard the land. Oh, nice. That's good. Good good thinking, since it was my only card. Sensei only card. Sensei. Sensei only. Sensei only. Sensei Sensationally. Rob, you're gonna die to yours too. Yeah, I know <laughs> I am. Have to do anything. We're just gonna fucking die. Yeah, I'm just gonna make it easy. Oh, don't do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that Austin is dead. And what a, uh, what a fun ruiner. Yeah, <laughs> but a, I'm I'm the fun, fun ruiner. You yeah, shot it's, it's, you it's, shot yourself in the foot and me. Instead it's a of good trying game. to win. It's, it's, it's a fun, enjoyable game, and now you're <laughs> going to sacrifice yourself to make it end faster. So I'm, I'm going to I'm sac I am sacrificing myself in order to make sure that you lose and Nick doesn't decide <laughs> to kill me instead of you. It doesn't really I, matter. It was having fun. I didn't I didn't actually have a like I didn't have a way to kill Nick. He had two if he had one less flying well, creature. Maybe if you could put grudges aside and team up with me. <laughs> yeah, well, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh if he if he had one less flyer, I, I would have I actually would have killed Nick a long time ago, but uh he had two flyers. Oh, he I got killed you told me that. Yeah, no, I know, but you know. Yeah. I would have I, I would have like if he if he had one less flyer I would have, I would have actually killed Nick to be honest. Yeah, he had three flyers that were four four. So yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do anything, unfortunately. Well, if he would have done that, then oh, I have such synergy now. Yeah. Drawing cards out the ass now is great. Austin <laughs> could have killed you, and he decided not to. I was worried about you. I had to switch my worry because you had that six six. You would have started stealing my cards. You had two lands in your hand. No, that card steal. Was it from the hand? Yes, it's from the hand. Oh, yeah, the cards from your hand. hand. You, the hand. you had you had two lands in your hand, so I was like, oh, whatever. Like that's why that's why I attacked you with it and let you kill your creatures I that was on the it. the graveyard or the deck one or whatever, because there's no. one that like play a random card from enemy's deck, and it's like okay. Yeah. So I enjoyed that game though. I had I got a laugh out of it. We should uh we should invite Edmund McMillan onto one of these. Yes. I'd be down for that. Yeah, I thought about that too, actually. All about his, uh, does he play Magic? Yeah. Oh, he's a huge Magic enthusiast. He, yeah. I, I said earlier in the episode, he, des he designed a new Magic card that's going to be in the new set. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure our audience wouldn't enjoy having Edmund McMillan on no. the channel. No, you guys, yeah. they they hate him. I I know. They really do. Not not a big fan. I think he's the worst. Everybody really dislikes Edmund McMillan. He made here. this really. He's caused a lot of problems in the yeah. uh, the indie community lately. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah he's also he's... like a huge asshole in the game, the movie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and yeah. all those tweets he was putting out. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. He said yeah. that YouTubers should give yeah. their money. To that was just the worst. Yeah, that was weird when he said that. Yeah, and then deleted his Twitter. Then deleted his Twitter account. Yeah. yeah, and canceled Rebirth. Like the he fifth time. He keeps doing that. Every he keeps day. Can I know he keeps canceling yep. Rebirth and then you know uncanceling. And yet he it. keeps sending me all these beta versions that I, I don't know. Play. I've like my email is filled. I've got like just forty different beta them versions away. of yeah. Like what do I need these for, Edmund McMillan? I don't want to. You trying to put them on the Steam game. Community Workshop? I'm like, do you guys want to buy this? No. Oh, yeah, okay. no I'll one wants it. it Not even I one. I put it on person. sale on the market for like four cents. I couldn't even. Couldn't even. Nobody wants it. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody even wants to touch that shitty ass game. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's the thing. So, on a count of hands, how many people actually took us seriously there? Because I want to know. There's one angry ass. There's got to be one guy who was like, man, I didn't know Ed Mill was such an I ass. I was halfway through my paragraph when you <laughs> <laughs> spoiled the joke. <laughs> oh, God. I wish I got a fucking code for Rebirth. That would be, like, the greatest thing. It looks so fucking good. There are no codes for Rebirth. I the know. I know it's canceled never coming out seriously though like have you guys been watching the his like all the all the blog posts and stuff there now uh, there's a new one there is yeah, it's, it's every sunday it's great actually he, he talks about the magic card that he designed in it and uh it looks pretty cool it's a cool uh cool card oh yeah he said i got to help design the magic. oh there it is yeah cruel sadist yep okay cruel one sadist. life put a one one counter on a cruel sadist Remove X when encounters from Cruel Status. Cruel Status deals X damage to target creature. Huh. Yeah, it's so pretty X cool. X really can give it to you. Okay, that's yeah, cool. X will give it to you. He will give it to you and your friends. All your friends. All of your friends will be have it have it given to them by X. Yes. Whatever happened to DMX? Is he dead? DMX? He's, uh, uh, he's having a party. It, you're probably right, honestly. I <laughs> don't think he's recorded anything for a while. He, I think he might be in jail. Yeah, I mean, that's not surprising. Let's be honest, if he's in jail, he's probably having a party in jail. He did talk uh, about, like, murdering people a lot. So I don't mean that, like, I wasn't trying to say that, like, as a racist statement. Like, he, j I just thought I heard that he was in jail. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> took it as a racist statement. But no, I, I hope it. not. I just gotta <laughs> it, say I that, because everybody always goes there all the time. Yeah. No, it's not a racist. Um, I mean, he, he makes songs about killing people and, like, having blood on his penis, so, like... You know, <laughs> really? Like, yeah. There's songs about having blood on what his penis. What kind of context is that in? Like, I don't understand. A, I got blood on my dick because I fucked a horse or something. I think it's one of the lines. Because I fucked a horse. Right the chick. lyric goes. No, yeah. it would be a not pregnant chick. I got more. What? What does he say? Hold on, I'm gonna. I'm gonna look That's this up. That's long, Austin. I is... got blood on my dick. You're googling. I got blood on my dick right now. <laughs> I got Let's blood see, the on. Only song about. This better not be on your OBS. Oh, okay. No, yeah. Okay, so. Here's here's the line. I got blood on my hands, and there's no remorse. So he not only has he murdered people, I don't really care. It's like that's. Oh, but it's not in his dick as well. No, well, okay, but no, no, no. But here's the next. Here's the next line. I got blood on my dick because I fucked a corpse. Oh. So okay. what? Yeah, that's the that's the second line of that. <laughs> that uh, doesn't even rhyme with remorse. No, not really. I mean, it kind of. That's does. actually what I'm concerned about. I got blood on my hands, cause then, and there's no remorse. I got blood on my dick. I always thought he said, I, "Cause I fucked a horse." That's what I always took it as. I yeah. What, that that is like the least likely area you're gonna get blood from. Well, like, I mean, like, I, well, maybe maybe it was like a like a reflex, like a really like a line that you have to really think about because like he's saying that he has such a large penis that he would make a horse's vagina bleed. That's mm. how big his penis is. You know, well, but instead, still have periods too, right? Maybe he was just, you know, picking yeah, a bad he, day. That's true. Yeah, he, he could just be fucking a horse on its period. That's a possibility too. Um, but in the end, he, he was because he had sex with a corpse. What so, the fuck are we talking? About? Yeah, and then uh, and then the next line I can't read out loud because it has a lot it's of n words in it. Sex. It is like, <laughs> it, it, I, I think okay. there's there's three words n word, three words n word, and I think there's another <laughs> three words and an n word. So like. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Right. Now that we got the the math done, I think. Yeah, that's a good, uh, <laughs> that's a good yeah, that's a good place to end it on fucking corpses. Um, so uh, X is gonna give it to you, and he's probably gonna kill you. He's gonna have no remorse, and then he's gonna fuck your body. 
And then for some reason, like, whatever he's going to have sex with is going to be bloody. Like, they, which implies oh, the yeah. way that he killed the person is, like... Yeah, really... like, even if you killed someone, and, like, did you just cut a hole in their butt and, or something? I don't know. That's like, possible. Cut a hole in their butt. But it's, it's the thing is that isn't it, after a certain point, if you're dead, you don't bleed anymore, right? Yeah. Well, no. I think you still bleed. It's uh, Doesn't still blood eventually all coagulate? I mean, eventually, yeah, yeah but... I mean, we, we, I don't think he's clarified over how long he's, uh... He's go still... grab, like, a drink or something before? Right. I mean, I would assume, I like, if he's if he's already I got accept. blood on his hands, you know? Nice. Like, I, I don't think he would have waited, like, a week to clean off his hands. Although, I mean, like, the next line is, I'm a nasty N-word. So, like, maybe he spent, like, two weeks with the blood on his hands, and then he, then he finally decided to, uh, to have sex with the corpse. Jesus. Yeah. And yeah. when, at what point did he fuck the horse in, in that time period? Did, <laughs> you know, was it right then? Maybe maybe he just had the horse in his house and he was just doing that all throughout the whole series of events, really. There's a whole new meaning of riding a horse. Yeah, yeah. He, he rode the Pretty shit awful. out of that horse. But, uh, yeah, and that's DMX for you. So, um, I like, I actually really like uh, reading out rap lyrics slowly. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, it's, ve it's very enjoyable to me. My you should whisper though. them all night. Big up, Just big up. Them. It's a stick up, stick up. And I'm shooting N words quick if you hiccup. Don't let me fill my clip wait, up wait, wait, wait. in your back wait. and head piece. Because the opposite hiccuping? of peace. Well, no, that's why he's shooting them, is because they're hiccuping. He doesn't like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the opposite <laughs> of peace is sending Mom Dukes a reef. So. Does she, like, hate what? Christmas or something? I don't understand. Well, I mean, it's like it's like what you put on a, on a casket, like a reef. Are we, oh, I thought yeah. she just like really not a fan Aretha of Christmas. Franklin. Yeah. You're talking <laughs> to the robbery expert. Step into your wake with your blood on my shirt. Not on his dick though. It's not. No. The yeah. Not yeah. Okay. Biggie. Biggie You're never had sex with corpses. He's oh, yeah, he he's good. going to wear the shirt that he killed you in to your wake. So. <laughs> what's this like? Rude. Step That's into your wake with your blood on my shirt. Don't be a jerk, and get shot over being resistant. Because when I lick don't shots... Don't be a jerk and just go get shot. Like, what are you going to... Because when I Come lick on. shots, that shit is persistent. Goodness Was gracious. The, implic... the papers. Where the cash at? Where the stash at? And we're past that. Before you get your grave dug from the main thug, 357 slug. That's pretty smart. Yep. That's Was the implication that he would shoot you for being resistant to him shooting you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I think the implication there is that is that he's he doesn't want to like he says, "Don't get yourself shot if I'm robbing you. Just give me the stuff that, you know, I'm I'm asking for you to give me and don't That's be resistant fine. otherwise I'm going to shoot you." So, That's mean. Yeah. I yeah. thought he just already killed you before he shot you again. So yeah, I was aren't thinking you like that, that he was shooting you before he I shot think you. he was implying that that's what he would do. He he would step into your oh, wake. Oh, it's all with, out of sequence like right. Pulp Fiction. Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a biggie it's a actually. Movie. Actually speaking like to 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 that point though, like uh Ready to Die, which is uh, the album that Give Me the Loot is off of, uh is a really good album because it tells a story. Like it starts with Biggie's birth and it ends with Biggie's death where he kills himself so it's really but good he didn't actually no he didn't actually kill himself he got shot presumably by tupac thugs maybe maybe not who knows so sad they could have wrapped together instead they had to die they did they did wrap together for a time and then you know apparently uh then tupac fucked biggie's girl uh after oh, you don't fuck biggie's girl man yeah he fucked biggie's girl and then also uh, Tupac got shot, and he thought that Biggie did it because Biggie just came out with a song, like, right afterwards called Who Shot Ya, which, you know, Blue. seems like... Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, like, if you... Like, honestly, Tupac should have perhaps a little bit more faith in Biggie Smalls in that he wouldn't be so, uh, obvious about, like... <laughs> and also, he should probably know that, like, it takes a while for a song to go from production into, you know, being released. I... You know right, I mean? well, I don't know why he would know that as a rap artist himself. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, yeah. So that was the whole East Coast, West Coast beef. Also, Sad. East Coast for life, just saying. Just putting that out East there. East Coast, actually. Yeah, Beast Coast. It's, East Coast is the Beast Coast. 
More like West the Coast East is coast. stressed coast. <laughs> yeah, they're very stressed. They're I mean, always stressed out. Tupac was really stressed by the end of his life. So, you know, that's a yeah. thing. I never really liked Tupac. all that sex with people that he shouldn't have been having. That's his well, own fault, really. Not only that, like, like the thing about Tupac, and I don't want, I'm not going to go too far into this, but the, no, thing, go, go. The, thing, the thing I don't like about Tupac is he was such a fucking hypocrite. Because, like, he rapped, I mean, he got really popular about rapping about killing people. And then he, and being a thug, right? And then uh, he even has, like, thug life tattooed on his fucking chest. And then he, uh, and then he starts rapping about how, like, you know, we shouldn't kill each other, guys. This is a really bad idea. We should work together and try to be good people instead of doing all this really awful shit and being products of our, our environment because that's what everybody wants us to be and we shouldn't be that. And it's like, wow, Tupac, that's a really good message. I, you know, I, I can appreciate that you're trying to turn around. And then the whole East Coast, West Coast beef comes down and he talks about how he's going to kill every single East Coast rapper in the song... Uh, 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 I forget wow. the name of the song. Yeah, but he's like, like he literally, he's like, he's like, bad boy entertainment. Fuck you too, uh, uh, mob deep. Fuck you. Like they weren't even part of it. He was just like every East Coast rapper. He named them. He's like, I, I, like I'll kill all you motherfuckers. And it's like, Tupac, like you were just rapping about how we shouldn't kill each other and you know let bygones be got be bygones and shit like that. And then so you start rapping like the Optimus Prime of rappers. Yeah, pretty you much. Pick them all. And I, and you know, I, that's why I appreciate Biggie more because he never, he was always just like, yeah, I robbed people and I've killed people and I'm a fucked up dude. I won't deny it. I'm that's, I'm not cool. And like he, he raps about like how he thinks his mother doesn't love him and nobody actually really likes him and he, he's only like his why. money. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and like he, he was never like, Hey, we should stop killing each other. He was like, yeah, I mean, that's just fucking life. We just kill people. You know, fuck it. It's really it like, not though. That's <laughs> horrible. Well, that was his life. In fairness, like that's yeah. and why I glorify any of that shit. Well, I mean, he he grew up in Bed Stuy. That was just kind of a common thing, and you know, rapping is just sort of at that era. It was it's just sort of a way to be um, strong or hard or whatever. So, but uh, yeah, now rap is about whatever, I guess. You would think that they would have taken that opportunity to, at the very least, sort of reinforce that this platform is their option, that they can sort of make it uh, publicly known that maybe they have this stance, but they don't really believe it. Yeah. You know, it's all for show. It's all for entertainment. But then people actually die. Yeah. And that's when that line is obviously crossed. It's like, why can't we just keep this being silly, like, well, off in fantasy realm? So if somebody says, I'm going to shoot all the people in whatever entertainment... Uh, you know, it's just a joke, you know, yeah. not serious. Well, I think part of the thing is that, like, it wasn't for a lot of them. Like, a lot of a yeah. lot of the people that came out of gangster rap were actually just gangsters and stuff. Like, they were just criminals who actually, like, who happened to, their sound happened to be popular uh, for a time uh, because they were talking about, I mean, it, like, rap, gangster rap is sort of an extension of the blues, like, a lot of things, I mean, I think a lot of music comes out of the blues, and it, it's sort of that as well, I mean, it, it's not terribly different from, like, you know, Johnny Cash and stuff, talking about being in jail and stuff when they hadn't at the time, you know, being bad is cool, and in this particular case, in gangster rap, a lot of the gangster rappers actually weren't lying, and, a lot of that shit holds over, you know, and you, you get kind of tied into that criminal life and stuff, and it's hard to break those chains, so. Just to clarify for the comments that are about to come, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying, uh, directly comparing the sound of Johnny Cash to gangster rap. I think he was <laughs> making a bigger statement about yeah. the ideology behind it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's music is music either way, but yeah. yeah. You heard it first, guys. Johnny like... Cash is basically Tupac. Like that. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, is that like a rap? Rap uh, was birthed in the same era that uh, reggae and punk rock were birthed in, and uh, in fact, the early rappers hung out with a lot of the kids that did punk rock as well, because it kind of came around the same time as like the Vietnam War, where everybody was kind of pissed off, but they didn't really have an outlet to do anything about it. Now, gangster rap started around in the early '90s with N.W.A. and stuff, where it became a little bit more hardcore, because around that time, before then, it was more um, uh, political rap or socially conscious rap or, um, you know, more like rap battle-esque rap when, like, like how it kind of started in the, in the 70s. It was, it was more like right. stuff that they kind of took out of 
what they actually used to battle, and they just made it into tracks and stuff. Um, but then eventually it got, with NWA, it got a little bit harder and, and got a little bit more gangster, and then, you know, people were searching for the actual criminals th that they could sell records from, and, you know, Biggie came out of that, Mob Deep, Tupac, you know, all those things. I mean, NWA, too, were, um, uh, they started as that, too, just, you know, criminals, really. Um, but again, like, not terribly different from punk rock, either, like, it's a similar kind of mentality and similar kind of stuff so i don't know yeah interesting how it all started there in such a raw place and then slowly but surely became very consumer driven yeah oh I guess totally basically everything does yeah. that yeah exactly yeah it, it wasn't as bad in the 90s where it was consumer driven because a lot of the gangster rap was popular because it like because people were searching for it like a lot of, a lot of the stuff was was kind of almost underground but not really. It was it was getting more mainstream because rap rap. We, we all have to keep in mind like hip hop and stuff ha, ha, hasn't been mainstream for that long. It's only been since like what sure. the like the early to mid two thousands. Honestly. Well, and the nineties were all about the distribution, right? Because you're literally handing tapes to people. Yeah. Which is a totally different experience than you have when you can just go to some website and download a shitload of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and and the the whole the whole idea of hip hop really was like the producer MC thing. Uh, and uh -huh. that that's kind of gone now, I think. Like, producers and MCs are kind of the, the same now. Um, like, the, there's no... Like, the, like there, there's the, the famous duos, like, like uh, Puff Daddy and Biggie, you know, with Bad Boy Entertainment, you know? And sure. So, some, some modern rap groups still... What about still, Dr. Dre? Uh, well, Dre was, um, Dre was part of NWA originally, and then he, uh, and then he left because they all got broken up over Easy e being... A douchebag basically oh. um so they all they all got broken up so dre i don't think ever really had he, he, that, he was part of like a rap group which was different from uh that but like it, original rap is just like producer mc stuff and it was sort of it's funny because the mc was always just kind of the hype man for a dj sort of like how dubstep is now where it's just kind of like a, a like a dj but then there's there was a hype man involved and the hype man eventually became more popular than the dj because the dj would be spinning the tracks and then the the hype man the mc would started rapping and then it became more important for the rap to be important and uh you know it kind of evolved from there so yeah fair enough yeah in the history I went of to metal shows. Great. I don't know much about the history of hip shop, hip hop. I was just mostly into metal. Hip, hip, hip shop. shop. <laughs> That's the class that you take in uh, high yeah. school, actually, where they teach you how to how to uh, spit hot fire. Hip it's shop. like hot fire. Yeah, it's like it's like wood shop, but you know, for records making. Got it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I I, I like I I uh, went to a lot of metal shows too when I was younger. I don't know. I like I just like music in general. Yeah, but and, you hate metal. Well, I hate... trying to make you listen to metal, and you're just not into it. Well, I don't really like modern, like, black death metal type of stuff where they scream a lot. I just don't like that at all. That's not interesting to me. But, like, older metal is is, is pretty cool. Like, I, I, can, I can dig on that kind of stuff. Where's your line? Where's your cutoff? When they start screaming incoherently, that's that's my cutoff, basically. I don't like that. Yeah, but, like, even the older metal that had it. No, I mean, not not really. I mean, yeah, kind of. Okay, what do you like think it, about Pantera? Uh, I've listened to some of it. Eh. I'm not, I'm not terribly into it, to be honest. The closest metal I get to is, like, a little bit of Iron Maiden and a little bit of Metallica. That's about as far as I go. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's not that far. They're, they're, they're probably the, light, the lightest metal you can get. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. But I, really? I don't really like that stuff generally. I'm more into the more modern stuff now. You know, yeah. technical, progressive, crazy, like really yeah. complex patterns. See, I, I do like the, the progressive stuff when it's not metal. Like, it's just rock. Like, Well, uh, what do you think about Rush? Oh, Rush is I great. I love Rush. You think Rush, Rush would be metal? I think that a lot of the influences of the bands that I listen to come from that. So in a way, they've sort of diffused a little bit for me. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Right. Just a lot of times, like Rush, it's it's yeah, it's progressive. It's really weird time systems, and it's 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 kind of strange to you can't really bob your head to it because it's it's always changing it. But it's, it's in, in a good way, and they make it sound good. When it when it's metal to me, it seems like it's really way too random, and there's not a lot of. Mm -hmm. way to, to get into the music because all the time it's just very jarring to me and, and I can't 
Yeah. It's like, I, don't I think you need really... a, a hook to get you involved in it before then all of a sudden it seems appealing. Because I'm not really sure where I made that transition, but I just can't really go back anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sort of, I'm sort of like along with with Austin as well. I, I didn't know that Rush would be considered metal, but I I really I'm not sure that they are. I'm just saying yeah. that they group in with a lot of the bands right. I listen to just because of the influences. Yeah, like they're God like Fathers. progressive rock, I guess. It, it's mm -hmm. it's it's progressive, but it, uh, the, many people call it classic rock because you know that's where, it's where you find the music at. The Africa Bombada of metal, or the uh, <laughs> Sugar Hill Gang of metal, the Godfathers maybe. That would that would I could I could get down with that or like the uh, New York metal, dolls just... of metal or uh, New York dolls of metal yeah that's that's a that's a fair there's a lot of subclassifications though and I just particularly like the progressive stuff but there's plenty of like metalcore bands that aren't at all influenced by them yeah I mean and I've many of them influence each other I, I've liked uh, did you did you ever listen to like New York hardcore stuff. A lot of that stuff I don't like, actually. Do you have a yeah. specific band in mind? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm thinking like Black Flag or like Bad Brains and stuff, but. You know. Bad Brains is alright, Black Flag I can't get into. They all, A lot of them ride this weird line where they seem like they're almost about to become skinheads or something, or like mm. white supremacists, and yeah. I really don't get into any of that. And a lot of that comes from like the punk influences, and yeah. I don't think they necessarily are actually, but I know that there actually are some groups that totally are all about that, and it just gets really shady because I don't know who they are. Yeah, um, a lot yeah. of the time you can't even tell from the lyrics either at first until you sort of listen to it closer. And if they're screaming, you can't usually hear what they're saying. The the way the way that I look at it with like New York hardcore stuff, like my friend Dennis used to be really into that. And uh, th the way I look at it with stuff like that is, I really like going to punk shows and stuff with like local bands because I think the live performance aspect of it is really important i think in especially that yeah, kind definitely. of music like and and you know the feeling the energy in the room and and getting a part of that and being in a mosh pit and stuff like that like that's all that's all kind of part of it but i i don't think it's the kind of thing for me that i would casually listen to like i like i think the what's what's the big bad braid song the um the uh the big takedown i think is what it is that's 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 fine. Like I could listen to that probably, but like for for the most part, it's mostly meant to be played live, and that's sort of. I mean, that that is sort of the birth of punk, right? Is it? It started in CBGBs in New York yeah. and stuff with with television and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, it, it's sort of. Um, it's a, it, a lot of that is meant to be played live, and I think a lot of the metal kind of is birthed, at least the mentality, maybe not the music, is birthed out of like that New York hardcore punk scene as well. I don't know a lot about the history of metal though, so. You know, but like more modern metal seems like the mentality seems very similar to me. Um, it it sometimes is, and yeah. I think the big difference too of why I can't get into some of the older stuff or the newer stuff is, in my experience, and this is just my personal experience, it has a lot to do with the attitude of the room when you're at one of the shows. Right. Because I've been to a few shows where, like, if you get knocked down, they don't help you up, and they'll just as soon step oh, on you. Really? That's really. But, that's really. Yeah, bad and, etiquette. and you can feel that really fast. You're not, and that's... those are the shows that are like, you guys are a bunch of assholes, and I'm not interested in being in part of this scene. Uh, yeah. But then I've been a part of plenty of shows where it's like, if they knock you over, like it's all in good fun. They pick you right back up, they dust you off, and everybody's happy. Yeah. Uh, and and people look out for each other. Yeah. And that's kind of the the attitude that I prefer. Well, and it doesn't have anything to do with how much they're screaming on the stage. It's yeah. just the people that are into it. Well, you know, like I I, I would say that I would totally go to a, like a metal show with you. Like I, I would I I think that would be fine. I I'd, I'd very much enjoy that actually. Like a, one of one of the greatest uh, shows that I've been to was a Guar show that I went to, and right. it was awesome. It was like really that fucking dude died. Fun. Yeah, he did. Guar died. Yeah, I know. It's kind of sad, but it's my heroin or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it happens in the music industry but, thing, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. but uh but anyway yeah like Gu 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 i don't like, mean to laugh at him for dying me, i just <laughs> yeah no it is but the the um yeah but for me like it's not the kind of thing in a similar sense to like new york hardcore or like you know some some of the later punk it's not something that i'd like to casually listen to whereas right. i'd like to go to a show to it of it but um you know listening yeah, to I'm, it I'm, mm. I'm not really into shows. I've only ever seen really one concert before. I mean, music for me is just something that I, I just kind of just listen to. Yeah, just kind of sit there. Like, I don't really, like, uh, yeah, I'll have music on in the background when I'm playing things like Dota or maybe I'm in the car. Uh, my power is, like, constantly surging, and that worries me. But it's mm. not good. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, my God, the lights are just getting really bright. I might die. Um, but, 
but yeah, like I, 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 if I'm li strictly just listening to music, I'll put music on and I just, I, I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna close my eyes or anything, but I'll just stop doing anything and just listen to the music and things like metal and really hardcore stuff doesn't really fit for that kind of listening, I, I think. Mm. It's funny because uh, I listen to it every day pretty much. It's just always on when I'm working or, or between editing or whatever's where I need to hear. I don't have right. it on. But, uh, but yeah, it's 50% it's the shows and 50% like private listening for me. The shows make up the reason why you're so energized to listen to it outside of that. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. I, uh, and I it's been enough momentum to me for like the last five years because mm -hmm. I haven't gone to a lot of shows since like I finished college. I mostly have gone. I've gone to like one or two. Uh, but back before then, I used to go to them like every week. And yeah. it's just weird to see how how that's changed and how there really aren't as many good shows anymore in my area. And it's just sort of depressing. And a lot of the bands that I used to really like na uh, then aren't really around now as much. Or if they are, they don't really hang out here as much anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a weird time. You. Yeah, yeah. Um, although, uh, despite having, I think, said throughout this and it sort of to that point that, like, I'm not that big into modern hip-hop or modern... Uh, a, a lot of modern music in general. I think music is actually moving into a really nice place right now, even mainstream stuff. Um, and I, I'm kind of more into it. Maybe, maybe that's me getting older. I don't know. But um, the the like the last year of like the the pop craze has. I'm not gonna say it's good, but it's been not as bad as like the yeah. past like ten years of pop. I mean, Wrecking Ball. Like seriously. I, okay. I mean, that was was that a year? Was that over a year ago though? Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just. What happens is, I, I when I when I drive to lunch uh, every day, I, I pretty much drive at the exact same time, and uh, I listen to the classic rock station, which is my normal music that I listen to, and I listen to that, but I, I only get it for like ten minutes, and then it hits this commercial at the same time every day. So the only radio station left is the pop, the current music of today, or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, and there are songs on it that play, and I'm like, well, this isn't bad. It's, yeah. not, I w it's not something I think I would I mean, listen yeah. to, but it's not. But see, at the same time, though, they're also put on shit like Katy Perry or yeah. Miley, like that, I think, and I'm like, I don't want to listen to this. I, yeah, I, th I think the, like, super mainstream pop is never going to be very good. I mean, except for, like, way back in the day when it was, like, Michael Jackson. But, like, the... Like the really super mainstream, yeah, sure. But I mean, but I mean, like the stuff that actually is kind of popular now that is also mainstream, uh, like the pop like, rock bands. Those yeah, like little... like the Black Keys, I think are great. Uh, the Odd Future is a, I think, a really good hip hop band now. Uh, the, I actually went to one of their shows, and it was great. It was really awesome. So I would actually highly suggest that you guys go to an Odd Future show if you like Odd Future because it's awesome. But uh, yeah, Forever. like Odd Future, it's a uh, there, well, you probably heard of, like, Tyler, the Creator. No. Oh, I have okay. a really strange musical bubble because I just have never listened to the radio. I've only just listened to albums and carried stuff right. on my phone or my iPod. So, yeah. like, I don't ever get exposed to whatever's going through popular culture at the moment, which I don't mean to sound like a big hipster, but I guess it sort of turned me into one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm super sheltered when it comes to musical preferences. I just, I've discovered things from branching paths through the bands I like to other bands. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, some of the stuff. Like, you probably heard of Adele, right? I have. I don't think I like her. I've listened to her stuff. I think she's. I think her music is pretty good. I don't it, like, it, listen to it. It's, it's still. Singer. Yeah, it's, it's still like a all really. Singer. Like the the whole design of pop music though is still kind of the same. It's really an original and and no no yeah. variations. It's it's just like three or four chords every time, and that, the that's part, still yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of I don't even care about the chords. It's just the production of it all and the way that it's so formulaic. Like yeah. I can't it's... even listen to traditional song structure anymore. It just makes me upset. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm okay with like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, uh, like uh, bridge, verse, chorus, or you know that that's pretty much basic song structure, and mm -hmm. that's that's okay still as long as you. But now what it is now, what I'm noticing a lot is that it's verse, chorus shorter verse chorus 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 that is like basic song structure for the structure for today it's yeah. it's so annoying because it's like man i i like the chorus but this is like the seventh time i've heard the chorus please yeah. stop yeah, yeah. And it's weird because songs like that's not a new thing like there's a lot of classic rock songs that i really like that'll repeat the chorus like six times but they'll do it at the end of the song and they'll fade it out right and, and they'll be like it'll, that'll be like an eight or nine minute song and or something right. along those lines. And it's yeah. like they have, they did that intentionally. You're just repeating the chorus so much. 
yeah. and you're always doing it at the same point, and it just gets to me. Like I notice it every time because it's like, oh, they're gonna repeat. Okay, you have I, to repeat the course. I have a, a very unique problem with why song structure gets to me, and I think it's because I have a really bad memory in most elements in life, except for when it comes to music. So when I hear traditional song structure, I basically have memorized the song by the second chorus. And I know where it's going from here on, so it's like this is now just I'm just waiting. Yeah. And if I ever hear it again, I'm going to be waiting from the second the song starts, so I'm just instantly bored. Yeah. And it's partially just because of like the way my head works, I guess. I just sort of like loop shit over and over in my mind, and it just makes it really easy for me to like picture the trajectory of a song. And that's kind of why I need to have progressive music, otherwise it just gets really boring and lame. You should and, listen and the, to the... David Bowie. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah, I have. I have the hooks yeah. of songs are like you know, there's, there's like songs will have like three or four like catchy tunes in them. They're riffs or if it's a guitar based yeah. song or things that are just like sound really nice. It's like a short little bit of of sound or or, or singing. But now it's or, and it's, it's probably been this way for a while. But they'll have like one and then they'll just repeat it yeah. throughout yeah. the whole song. This little like do 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 little thing. Well, it's like freaking tested it all and they've found yeah. what sells the most albums and they try to do whatever appeals to that. Yeah, I mean, hey, that, that's it's like this is good, but give me like two or three more of these so it doesn't get old very quickly. That's why I didn't really like a lot of the modern hip hop or like the the hip hop that was uh, played during the mid two thousands into kind of today. Uh, right. It's because it, it's so formulaic and the flows are all like no one plays with flows like. Like Lil Wayne just has just the one flow and just, yeah, just does the, the whole, whole thing. thing. One tempo. And his rhymes are just so fucking boring. Like part of the thing part of the thing that's really interesting to me about hip hop, and especially like gangster rap in the nineties and stuff, and now and, uh, granted, even in the nineties they had you know, bad rap. Like, sure, like I'm not I'm not saying that's not a thing, but uh, but I'm but but like lyricists were important in hip hop, you know, like having really interesting uh like it's basically being a poet like it is like it, you, yeah. you 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 try to make uh an interesting idea and you try to convey it in the most interesting way possible while you also make somebody listen to it see feel that it's cool feel the beat and then also have to like go back and be like oh that's what that's cool that that's how he structured that thought you know I and that's completely agree yeah and that and that's and and with like Lil Wayne I was I listened to one song with like I forget it's something about kissing his daddy, and he like okay. literally the whole there's an entire verse where he rhymes the word daddy with fucking daddy, and I'm sorry but that's not what rhyming is. You don't rhyme one word with the same fucking word. Like that's not rapping. I'm sorry, it's just not. It's just not right. And before the comments come in and be like, yeah, but there was that really sad. Uh, show where his father died and then you know he was really sad when he sung that song he's like okay sure emotion. yeah he feels emotion yes he's a human being that doesn't make the song good like it, it's just, i don't know it's it, oh, i agree i agree yeah. i'm totally in the same boat if a if a hip-hop artist can present to me articulate ideas put down in a new and original way i'm totally on board that's why i like de la soul that's why i like bus driver yeah uh, buster rhymes even all three of them they're really, really intelligent in the way they put words together, mm -hmm. and they use an incredibly extensive vocabulary. Yeah, so yeah, I totally. love that. You'd I like would totally you'd, listen to that. You'd like uh, like Black Star. Um, you'd like uh, if you ever heard Tribe, Tribe Called Quest. You'd probably I like. I think you've made me listen to it, and I think I didn't like it. Oh, you didn't like Tribe? All right. Well, Jurassic I, well, Five. Well, I don't really know. I, yeah. You generally, I get like one YouTube video, and I listen to that, and I'm like, all right, I'm not feeling this too much, but it's okay. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. I'll if yeah, I yeah, like totally. it. I'll, there's a lot, I mean, yeah. and there, there's there's a lot of really great underground hip-hop now. Like, I wouldn't even say that he's totally underground now. I thought he kind of still is. But uh, Atmosphere, well, I, I wouldn't say he. I mean, technically his rapper name is Slug. But um, anyway, the Atmosphere, I think you'd like because it's not, it's totally about something, all of his songs. And they, he, he kind of tries to make the lyrics interesting. And that's the whole idea. And he writes them. Like that's the other thing too. Is cool. like a lot, a lot of hip hop today is not written by the rappers, and it's just, and you can kind of tell, and it's just kind of like, eh, like I, I don't, I don't know, man. That's that's the thing with lyrics, though. Is that people don't understand 
how much you can do with words in songs. Like the, the right. there's almost no limit to the creative you could or creativeness you can show in in song lyrics. And people think that oh, if as long as I just rhyme words, I'm done. That's all I got to do. Yeah, you know, right. if I if I rhyme yes. love and dove, that's well, and it's it. also that are inspired and go further. What, what's what's cool? Like, like what was cool about like the the rappers that I loved or love are are like, and this is what I meant about flow is they experimented with the medium by changing up the flow of the song. Like, that's the whole, that's part of the thing, is that it fucks with tempo, which is why I also said that hip-hop kind of came out of the same era of reggae and punk, because they also did that same thing. They they also kind of uh, fucked with tempo, and kind of fucked with flow, and kind of fucked with, with stuff like that, and tried to really expand upon the medium, whereas a lot of really mainstream hip-hop, like Drake, or, you know, whatever is really popular, the Lil Wayne, you know, it's... It's just kind of all the same tone all the time, and it's clear that they didn't write it, and it's clear that that right. they're they're like they're when when a I think when a songwriter sings something that isn't theirs, it's not as bad as when a rapper raps something that isn't theirs, because when a rapper raps something that isn't theirs, you can kind of tell that the it's not important to them in a way you know what i mean and i, I don't know uh, there, there was a better thought that i had in my head to explain what no, i meant i, I but... think i'm still with you like yeah. the whole drake song with the starter from the bottom now here that's like the confluence of all the worst <sighs> things about yeah. it, all of it yeah it doesn't have any substance to the lyrics he doesn't deliver it in a meaningful way he doesn't sound emotionally attached to the song there's literally no music worth yeah. talking about yeah. You're just listening to him mumble to himself until it ends. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and and oh yeah, and that, that's that's what I was saying. Like, uh, that, that's that, that's the thought that I was gonna say is like when a songwriter sings something that isn't theirs, um, you know, part of it is because like they have a really great voice. Like uh, Pharrell Williams was talking about how happy the song that he's like really famous for now. Um, he tried to sell that to CeeLo Green back when he was like a songwriter and not like uh, very famous, right? And he said CeeLo's version was a lot better. Um, and, and in that way, you know, like, part of the the the, um, the the voice and stuff like that and the way that it's delivered is different from a song versus a rap where it's that, like, I guess I'm just getting the personality of the rapper and it's just not the same because singing is not that important in hip-hop. And it's, it's less... It's more about the cleverness of the rapper and stuff and less about how much I care about the person it's, it, himself... Whereas, like, like Drake's stuff, it just seems like, okay, Drake's really popular because he's, like, really attractive and, you know... Well, he's, like, an icon, right? Instead of... Yeah. Like, the, there's this difference between there's singers, there's performers, and then there's just socialites. Right. And sometimes I feel like some rappers sort of slide down that. Yeah. Uh, Let's be honest, like, though. Drake has no street cred. <laughs> he really doesn't! He really doesn't. I don't even know where that puts you, then. Yeah. I, I know. I, I, I don't... I don't, I really don't like... Because, like, if a singer sings really well and really articulately and has a lot of skill behind what they do, then you have rappers who are really great at being able to, on the spot, be able to put together words in really imaginative ways, and then sometimes just the fact that you can make your tongue do those things live on stage in front of right. a thousand people, that's really impressive. But then you have sometimes where people just sort of deliver a monologue at whatever pace they feel like, yeah. That doesn't feel like anything worth caring about. Yeah. It's yeah, just like, why are you doing this? Why I are you agree. in front of us? What I'm going to be honest, like, point? everything we talked about is about uh, more mainstream stuff. There's a lot of music out there. Yeah, a, a totally. shit ton that's amazing. Yeah. But it's almost impossible to find. It, yeah. it really, It's really hard to find. Yeah. Uh, well, it's there, though. We're speaking in vast generalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, we, that, that, is, that is important to note, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, and then, and like I said, I I found a lot of hip hop that's mainstream ish now that I like. Like, like I said, Odd Future, um, I think they do a lot of stuff that's really interesting. They've kind of got the pulse of what people are feeling again, uh, which I think rap hasn't for a long time because since since the gangster rap era and then moving into the mainstream hip hop, it's been talking about like how much gold they have and how many bottles of champagne right. they're uncorking and stuff and it's just like okay man like that's cool that you're cool but i don't care like that doesn't i'm not relating to right. you at all whereas odd future does stuff that's just like 
like it's just like fucked up thoughts in their heads and a lot of times it's just uh uh like similar to odb where it's just kind of like a, a stream of consciousness kind of rap and that's really cool to me and and you know and and they're talking about how they don't like certain things and like other things you know is shit like that that's that's more interesting or talking about struggle because like i said hip-hop sort of was birth like like a lot of music i think birthed out of like the blues type of stuff so it's supposed to be about the struggle it's not really supposed to be about how awesome you well okay Okay, I'm not going to say it's not supposed to be about how awesome you are, because, I mean, early hip-hop, too, like, the beginning of, of hip-hop was about being how awesome you is because it was rap battle stuff, but it's still, it, it kind of evolved into something that was more bluesy and more, sh like, about struggling and about having a hard time, and when it got to the point where, you know, I think it, it almost, it almost, <laughs> it's funny, I think the death of hip-hop, if there was a death of hip-hop, came about in a similar way to the death of punk rock. In that punk rock was all about a bunch of kids who were frustrated with the world and the government and uh, music in general, how they had like seven minute songs and they were tired of that and they wanted to go back to like Chuck Berry, like sped up Chuck Berry riffs that were just like three minute songs talking about something and whatever and just keep going. And it was a bunch of kids who didn't know how to play their instruments, right? They didn't have, they had no idea how to play any of the things that they were playing, just making noise, right? That's sort of why uh, Sid, not Sid Vicious, um, Maybe Sid Vicious, I forget. Uh, the, but anyway, the, he Ramones. made he made a he made a noise band after that because it's all about noise, right? It's just it's just it's about people playing music poorly. And then punk rock kind of grew over time, and then eventually the musicians started learning how to play their instruments because that's sort of what happens when you play instruments right. for several years. And punk rock kind of suffered from that a little bit, where like it wasn't that interesting because it was a bunch of people who were actually really good at what they did. Um, and I think hip-hop is in a similar s boat where, you know, gangster rap kind of started about, man, like, I have to fucking steal, be like, I have to steal, uh, uh, radios from cars and smoke crack and do all this, all, all this other awful shit because my life is terrible and I grew up in a horrible place and this is terrible. And then eventually they stopped having to do that because they got rich and they started rapping about how rich they were and then it stopped being relatable. So, I don't know. That that was a useful little way that you put that. I enjoyed that a whole bunch. Mm. And uh, I think the part where I think my version of metal that I'm interested in sort of diffuses from what you described as the kids learning how to play their instruments takes that mentality, but it's the kids that went to music school and became like really good at playing improvisational right. jazz and then decided to apply that thinking and that mentality of not being bound by any rules or conventions that generally music is supposed to follow uh, and then trying to make that fit with whatever they felt was vibrant at the time. Right. And then it turned into an explosion of 10 million genres. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, but I've also listened to plenty of the, the kids who couldn't play their instrument as well. And many of them by now were bands I listened to in the early 2000s. And now they play quite well. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's sort of what happens when you when you play an instrument for several years. Yeah. That, that, was, that was sort of the death of punk rock, too. I don't know what happened to classic rock. Did it just become rock? It yeah, became country. it became Nickelback. It became happens. power chords. Is what it became. Yeah, it became Creed. Yeah, with arms wide or open. Yeah. Go Marlins. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, you know, I, we've been talking. We've been pontificating for an hour and uh, thirteen minutes. It's probably a good place to to end. Yeah. Yeah. Let's up, do man. it. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for joining us on Magic the Gathering Duels of the Planeswalkers 2014. Uh, 2015 should be coming out soon, so that's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited it's, about it's that. Yeah, we'll, we'll just say we won't buy it for a while until you get real mad at us. And then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did with 2013. Well, I mean, we're all ready to, to I, I mean, the thing is, is that well, it was 2013 and 2014. We liked 2013. We didn't like 2014. Yeah, I don't think oh, yeah, we can. Maybe we'll, we'll move on to the next one now. Maybe, maybe yeah, we'll, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll like 2015. Maybe 2015 is great. Possible. It's the best one yet. That's it's a possibility. <laughs> People we'll seem see. fucking hyped about it too. So, what scares yeah. me is that the release the date is packs. is July. There's no release date. It's just Ooh. July. Ooh, yeah. really? Well, yeah. So, I mean, maybe how they'll much release they a card a day do? for thirty days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be good. I hope they do have deck construction, but I'm not getting my hep hopes up. My hips up. I'm not getting my hepatitis C up. Don't, Even if don't they have it, we're not gonna up. make decks, right? Because then we're just gonna. <laughs> 
yeah. be upset about how my deck is not optimal, and then the commenters are going to be pissed. I'm at so us. bad at deck making. So yeah, but probably... we could, but we could make like really funny dicks. That's what I would like to do. I'd like to make like really funny. My dick's hilarious. Dicks. <laughs> I got a really funny dick, guys. I um, panic. So, anyway, thanks for watching us. We do this every Mondays and Fridays, so be sure to check back then uh, for another episode of Magic. And uh, we love you all. You're amazing. So come back. Not again. on Wednesdays. Not on Wednesdays. No, no Wednesdays. No, I do not. Yeah, Wednesdays isn't Sundays for me. Yeah. Same Almost thing. Wednesday. It's like Wednesday in like two hours for me. That's true. Yeah. It's Wednesday in like 40 minutes for me. So. Oh. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, see you guys later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hey. This is Alpaca Patrol signing out. Peace, fools.